So thanks for allowing me to have this time. I'm nowhere an expert. I just started using Canva in June after meeting this wonderful woman, Shell, at PodFest back in May of last year. She goes by the real Canva girl, and she's been a real help with helping me understand and ask silly questions. I send her messages and like, okay, how do you do this? So thank you guys for allowing me to do this. And I'm very excited that I get to do this and I'm going to share my screen now and shut up. <laughs> so share screen. All right. I'm going to start with slide 11, which is the presentation thing I didn't know we could do. So forgive me in that corner and do not screenshot. I was in my pajamas 3 a.m. Okay, let's start. Here we go. Hi, I'm Virginia from the Lively Office and welcome to the Canva workshop for Flip Lifestyle. And I want to start by thanking Delyn for inviting us to speak in front of you guys. This has been um, really fun for me to do and I've really tested myself and the things that I um, can do in Canva. And I've definitely gotten better thanks to you guys. So before we uh, begin, I asked many of you on a survey I sent out on the community board. And I asked these three questions about what you wanted to learn, how to create an online design, um, do you want general overview? And then I left an option for free form just in case there's something out there that I wasn't thinking of that you guys may want to um, learn about. So I ended up um, getting the results of the survey and the big winner of what we're going to talk about today is how to make an online design, for example, on Instagram or Facebook. So how to do just a basic image is what I'm going to go over. And I have a little agenda of things I want to make sure we talk about. So I'm going to talk to you about, you know, creating a blank, complete blank image from scratch versus using a template for the base. I'm going to talk to you about the search option and how important that is, uploading photos, editing the elements option, and then using the right size. And hopefully at the end, we'll have some time for questions, uh, spe specifically the questions that were the additional questions on the free form, which I've listed here and kind of consolidated the questions. So if we have time, I would like to go um, back to this and try to answer some of these questions. So the next piece we're going to go, we're going to go ahead and go live and show you how to use Canva from the beginning. So now that we've gone through the live, I wanted to share with you some of the social media image sizes that I found for 2023 guide. I used statusbrew.com and several other options just to kind of validate these um, uh, facts here. So for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and TikTok, these are the different sizes that you should be using specifically for images, not for video, but specifically for images to do the profile picture, your landscape, your portrait, uh, doing a square I, or for your stories. So here is the uh, information. Feel free to take a screenshot or if you'd like us to, we can mail you the um, email you, of course, the entire presentation. But in order to get that, you're going to have to go to the livelyoffice.com and join our mailing list. And once you join our mailing list, we will send out the presentation to you. So I wanted to thank all of you guys for allowing me to present this to you today. And it looks like we have time for questions. So I'm gonna leave it up to you, Dylan. Okay, so that was my pre-recorded action. Obviously the energy level was way different than my normal behavior. I was like, oh, we're gonna go live. But anyway, <laughs> I was dreaming about 
all of this stuff. So I just like, okay, I'm gonna just do it. All right, so I am going to move the window with our faces over and I'm gonna go to the home screen of Canva and go live and start with the images. I want to just warn everybody that this is Canva Pro and we have a team. So there's things here that if you don't have Canva Pro that you may not be able to do. I personally think it was like a really good investment for our team. There's coupon codes out there. It was just a little bit over a hundred bucks for Canva Pro and four people can use it. So you can assign somebody in your family who's creative or whatever to help you out to help share your story because that's kind of how I look at Canva is a way for our voices in image to share your story and your messages are so important out there. So this is the Canva home page and just a very brief overview of what you're looking at here. Canva actually has a great way of doing the same thing from different sides of the platform. So you can start a project using the create design button on the right hand side, uh, any of the buttons that are along here, clicking more, and there's no one way to do it. So what I typically do for myself is I go to the home page, and most of the things that I'm doing are social media. So I will click the social media button and then just begin from there. Just a side note for those of you who have Canva has like a really good learning center. If you hit the learn button up here, the carrot and go to the design school, it has all the videos and you can start all of these different courses and get the information that you need. And they're very short videos. They're like four or five minutes at the max. So the attention span situation is not a problem. Hopefully if you miss something out here, just take the time and watch a few of the videos. And also the help center has been a big help for me. And again, the real Canva girl, if you need that one-on-one -on -one question answered because you can't figure it out, if you instant message her and you follow her on Instagram, she's pretty great about that too. So my thoughts for today, today is Groundhog Day. And at 6.30 this morning, Phil has told the world, I want to say his name, if any of you guys know how to say it, I can't say it, it's like Punkstowny. Does anybody from Pennsylvania on the call can say it? <laughs> Phil, the, the groundhog. <laughs> It's Punxsutawney. Thank you. Punxsutawney. Amy, thank you. Like, I, I'm not from PA, but I absolutely love the movie Groundhog Day. Okay. I cannot say that word, and I knew I wasn't going to say it right. I was like, what was it? Punka Punka? Punka Tony? Whatever. Anyway, so for Groundhog Day, I thought today would be a good day to create an image that I'm going to post on our Lively Office social media platforms. Just say, hey, happy Groundhog Day. We're going to have six more weeks of winter and my understanding is only 40 percent correct so for those of you who are not interested in that you know he could be wrong <laughs> i'm going to start with social media to create just a flat image and i think what i'm going to do is an instagram post because with the instagram post you can actually share these posts on your different social media platforms and schedule them out like an entire calendar year ahead they're not doing it to stories yet, so you have to kind of do them to posts. You can share to Facebook and I want to say LinkedIn and Twitter from Canva. So we're going to create the post first and we can start from anywhere. And normally I like to start from a template and just find something that I'm interested in and take it from there. So along your left hand side and if i'm talking too fast um someone needs to do like make me aware because i i'm originally from manhattan and that's the speed this is like my lower florida speed too so <laughs> help me out if i'm talking too fast so most of the designs i've picked an instagram post here and i'm going to change the name of it to groundhog day 2023 just so i know what i'm working on and tlo for our lively office it's going to be our post for today the design page that you'll need, everything you'll need is on your left hand side here to create this image. And I'm gonna to go to the template and obviously you can see I've been playing with it. And I'm gonna just search Groundhog Day. And I'm going to just find a template that kind of resonates with me, that makes me feel like, okay, I, I kind of like this. They're a little bit cartoony. I'm gonna probably change that up a little bit, but there's just something to start with, some kind of base. So I'm going to pick this guy and 
I can tell you that I immediately am not down with this particular character. Um, he's too cute. I need something a little bit um, different. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete, get rid of him. Get rid of this, this here. Too many words. Wah, wah, it's too late to watch. And just start cleaning up my base thing here. It's 2023. I don't wanna share that. I'm not down with brown birds, but I'll leave one of them there. Move the piece of grass, okay? So I started with that, with just the basic things that I like, don't like. Um, I want a real groundhog, so I'm gonna go to photos on my left hand side and I'm gonna search for groundhog. And this little guy right here is my favorite because he looks off and wild and high energy. <laughs> so I just clicked him and so he just pops up on my screen. And obviously this background is not gonna fit. It's gonna look like a picture in a picture. So what I'm gonna do is take this picture and I'm gonna edit the background out of it. And just super simple, hit edit image and background remover. And it takes a minute. It does take a minute. If you had a picture that you're interested in using also, like if you happen to have a picture of a real groundhog, you could have uploaded that image as well. So it's asking if all is good, hit apply, and now you've got your groundhog. And I think he's way more awesome than the cartoon one. Well, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I like him. All right, the next thing I'm like, okay, well, what else am I gonna say on this? First of all, in Canva, I have set up on the pro account our base stuff for Lively Office is our base font, our base colors. It's all kind of set up here on the home page. And this font right here, this particular font is not the font that we use at the Lively Office. So I wanna to try to stay consistent. So I'm gonna just highlight it like you would any document and just change the font. It'll have the different options that populate and I'm gonna go this route. This is the font I like to use gonna do the same thing for this one. Oh, I can't find it suddenly. Where is it? I know it starts with a K. I search it and there it goes again. So I've changed the font. Let's see here. I not really fond of this brown bird. This brown bird is what they're gonna call an element. And it's just the different options, the different things that you see here that you can add an arrow or a line or a heart or a circle or some different kind of sticker. And these are things that you can edit. So in this case, I feel like I want this guy to be like kind of cool. And I think I'm gonna make him move. So, but he's gotta come out of somewhere since his whole body isn't there. So I'm gonna move this grass bit down a little bit. And I, I need a circle. So I'm gonna take my circle, it's the wrong color, it's green. I'm gonna turn him into a little black circle and I'm gonna expand it because I need a little hole on the ground for this dude to pop out of. It makes no sense, right? So I'm just, whoop, let's see right here. So I, sometimes I struggle like with moving the things. There's like, a, sometimes this little circular movement thing shows up and sometimes it doesn't, it's kind of weird, but nah, it's what it does. So I'm gonna put him in front of there, but I'm not liking the way that that layer looks. It looks like he's behind it. So I'm gonna take this and if you think about the images, as you stacking pictures to make a design, it's gonna be easier to like conceptualize how to use this and create Canva to the max capacity that it that it's you're able to use it for. So I'm gonna bring, um, let's name this guy. Okay, we're gonna call him Phil Two. So Phil Two, <laughs> I'm gonna bring Phil Two to the front because I want him to be ahead of this little hole in the ground that I've made for him. And I think this little grass bit's kind of in the way. I'm gonna get him out of, get the little grass bit out of there and move those grass bits uh, over on the corner. And I don't like the way he's looking like such a still image. So I'm gonna go back to my edit image and I'm gonna put a shadow on him because that's like the whole point of a groundhog is to have a shadow, right? So I'm gonna use the drop and I gave him a little shadow. I kind of like the size, so we're good. And now I want to animate him. I want this groundhog to pop up and Instagram and all these other uh, social media sites have the ability. So I'm gonna animate him and I want him to pop up. So he looks weird and skinny when he pops up when you put the shadow on. I, <laughs> do you see that? Am I the one seeing that? Does he do that to you? Okay, 
he was like doing some kind of weird thing he's changing so i'm going to say that on the entry i want him to pop up and i want him to pop up a little slower so people can actually notice so looking good thumbs up yes okay so far okay if i'm going too fast please tell me somebody like shout out all right, so I think he's cool. He's gonna pop up. He's out of he's out of there. But I've decided that I don't really like this grass, and I'm not a fan of this grass. So I'm gonna go look for grass, and I want a photo of grass. So I'm gonna just click photo, literally just hit grass, and get myself a little grass plug. This looks like a little good grass plug, and I'm just gonna delete this and shrink it on down. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. I don't wanna search again. So I can hit the plus sign, click the image, hit the plus sign and just duplicate it and then just drag my little grass over to the different edges. So it doesn't look so obvious that Bill 2 is coming out of this hole in a weird way. Now I've decided that this bird in brown is not my favorite color. So I'm gonna edit him again and simply by clicking the image you'll know whether you can edit it or not the colors will come up on the left hand side and you can edit your image so i don't think this bird should be brown it's kind of boring i'm going to make this one of our tlo base colors i'm going to make them blue and i don't think we should have a sun because he predicted it's snow so let's get some let's get some snow in here just again search search the snow not a fan of the pictures of snow so i'm going to go to the elements and take a look at that. And there's different graphics. I think a graphic snow sounds good to me, something kind of moving, you know. I'll find something else. Um, how about this guy? He's kind of fun. <laughs> now let's just get some graphics. Let's just get some animated snow. Clearly there's not a lot of um, options here. Let's, let's just go with this guy here. So if I put the snow there, you can't really see it. The color of that is definitely not where you, you can't see it. So that's probably not the best choice. So I'm gonna undo it by hitting the back arrow and I've, un, I've taken away the snow that wasn't making any sense. Um, one of the things I remember from one of the questions, I'm kind of going off the agenda, was finding your designs. If you notice, the first thing I did was right away was name it because what I had discovered is that it'll come up with some funky name and then you didn't really pay attention to the funky name and then you're looking for your work and you're like where the heck's my work and it's listed with all these different designs or it's listed under the recents and it's everywhere and you can't find your stuff so anyway it's like just a just a thought that when you start your project just name it something right away and some naming feature so it's not a problem um, anyways, I have decided that in this scope that this background isn't working for me. I want a better sky. I don't care if he's predicting snow. We want a, we want some blue sky, so we're, I'm going to change it up. And I'm going to pick something that looks like Florida to me. So just pick the picture. And sometimes Canva does have a delay, like it's doing right now. I've clicked it a couple of times and it's not populating, but there we go. So the picture pops up and I'm just gonna right click it and just replace the entire background. So now Phil is chilling and cool here. Gonna hit play. Do I like it? Mm, it's okay, but it doesn't have my logo. So I need to get my logo, go to my uploads file, go over to my images and um, find our guy named Bobby. I like to put Fabi on everything just so people know where he that he's you know part of our team. I think he's too bright and he's taking attention away from Phil. So I have the option to make him transparent. And I'm gonna do that, just kind of put him out there. And today I feel like sharing our QR code for the lively office for anybody who might think this guy's cute and want to find us. I checked him, he's looking good. Over here on the option for QR code, I'm just gonna type in thelivelyoffice.com, generate a QR code. It populates on the corner and I'm actually gonna leave it on the screen kind of big and ask that one of you guys, if you can see the screen, test it and see if it's working. 
Sean's giving me a yup yup. <laughs> Man, just give me a yup yup. Okay, great. So this is another thing that I absolutely love about Canva because when Nanette and I first went to, we went to a Tony Robbins event, right? And we're trying to promote our business. So we get this wild idea like what? We're gonna wear jackets. Tony Robbins likes to make the place freezing and we're gonna make these jackets and it's gonna have our QR code. We're gonna be awesome in there. And then that paid, I don't even know what kind of money to get a QR code. And then I'm like way too cheap to get the shirts actually done professionally. So I go to Michael's and I do a print and I'm ironing things and we're in the hotel <laughs> and we're ironing. It looks like super crap. <laughs> Come to find out when you stop paying for it, the barcode, they cancel your barcode. So like now I've got this jacket with this giant barcode in the back that doesn't go anywhere. So I'm like, whatever, Canva's got a hookup. So for the next barcode, the next barcode, we'll just use Canva and it never expires. And it's part of your you know, membership with the group. So that was a, a little, um, you know, a lesson learned. So also probably don't chinch out on, <laughs> on merch, just pay for it because it's a hot mess now after being washed a few times. Anyway, um, so, um, do the QR code again, Virginia. Hmm? Do it again? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will do it again. Let me delete. And I'll start straight from the home page. Okay, so we're on the home page, and I'm like, oh, smack. I, I worked on a project. Where is my project? Went into projects. All my crazy projects are here. So many of them. And I, I know it's about Groundhog Day, so I'm just going to search Groundhog, and it's going to show me my Groundhog project. Oh. So there's Phil. I need a uh, QR code on your left hand side. You have the design option, the elements, which is the ones where they're kind of like cartoony and you can change the color. You have your uploads where you can upload your videos and your pictures. Your Oh, your text, I should add some text to this. Your text, your projects, your photos, audio, videos, and then down in the bottom, kind of hiding is your QR code. So you just click the QR code and just literally enter the URL and you can copy and paste it right into there or type it out, hit generate QR code, and it'll just automatically generate it and pop it onto the project that you're working. So um, I'll do, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do the flip lifestyle and see how that works. Is it, is it fliplifestyle.com? Am I doing it right? Is that the website? Thumbs up or is there an S? Okay. So thefliplifestyle.com, if that's correct, we're gonna- nope. get rid of the, the, there's no the. There's no the, okay. Okay, it's gotta be right or it won't work. <laughs> okay, so generate a barcode, I'll leave it up there and you guys check it, see if it takes us to Shane's site or our site, our community site, <laughs> our login page. I believe it's net. Uh Oh, it might be net instead of com. No, it, it works with .com. It worked. I okay. think you them all, so they they all should get you there. Com, net, all the others. <laughs> okay, so he bought all the extensions, which is great, and not all of us get that option because people, you know, that's a whole other business that people do is uh, domaining just to sell. But um, this is great. I think this is great. Uh, the things you can do with Canva, you can actually print your projects in Canva. You can do stickers, shirts, merch, and all that. I'll say this much, I'm not trying to like dog them, but we did stickers at one point and they're not the best quality. Like they kind of, they, after a moment, they kind of like got rubbed off and stuff like that. So I guess it depends on what your purpose is, but if they're, you know, they can't be great at everything. They're not a print shop, but you can still create the work that you need to create in order to get it printed from somebody who's in that business. You know, if you're, you know, need to, it, whether it's merchandise that you're creating, planners that you're creating that are customized as, um, as uh, giveaways, you know, whatever you're, you can create anything here. And I think it's fantastic. So I'm going to change this up because uh, I am going to actually schedule this to go out for um, us at the lively office. So I need to generate like the correct code. So I'm going to pop that bad boy right here. And I think I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna I'm gonna send him back a little bit so it's not like really stepping there. And then 
I'm gonna add some text um, to this page and I'm gonna say that we're done so we have time for questions. Uh, hit text. I'm a big fan of these fun ones. That's why you always see them recently used like the sparkle and the glow and anything that's like weird 80s vibe. So that's kind of what I use. But for this, we'll just go to a subheading, pop it on in there. And I'm just gonna write out our website on the bottom, livelyoffice.com. Gonna click it, hit my arrows, come down, and I'm just putting them, putting them under there. So I don't like the color of this. I feel like it's not popping up enough. I'm gonna make it black. And let's uh, see the product there. Is that a thumbs up? Thumbs up to go? Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and show this great other feature and hold on two quick seconds. Let me look at the agenda. I wanna make sure that before I get off the live, I need like three screens. I can't even find it because of, where are we? Okay, where's the agenda? Uploading photos. Do you guys want me to show you really quickly how to upload a photo? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go, so I'm gonna add Nanette to this post. I'm gonna get rid of a piece of grass, wait, I messed up because I had the wrong thing highlighted. So just hit the back button. I'm going to get rid of a piece of grass here. I'm going to minimize this little guy's hole and I'm going to add a picture of Nanette onto this. Okay. So I'm going to go to uploads and upload files. And I'm going to go to my downloads. And I believe that I have a new picture of the beautiful Nanette. Let's see here. Downloads. Mm -mm -mm. When would they not have? This is a hot mess. I have to tell you, I'm not a fan of some of these things. Okay, what is this picture? I don't even know what I'm uploading because I can't see. Hopefully, it's not something too sexy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not the one. <laughs> okay, it's my children's feet. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Looks like Christmas. Okay, I couldn't find the picture of Nanette, and Nanette had some sexy pictures there too. Sexy in a good way. Okay, it's my children's feet from Christmas. We do a weird sock thing. So everyone, we all stand, the six of us, the four of us, and you know, me and my hubby, we stand around with our funny socks and we take pictures every year. Um, so uploading is super easy. You literally just find your file. And I could edit this image if I wanted to by removing the background. Who knows what it's gonna remove? Hopefully just the floor and leave the feet there. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it'll like be weird, but you have the option to like clean it up a little bit. A button will come up. You can make the picture larger and kind of manually clean it with your mouse if the image doesn't, you know, clean up good enough. And in this case, it cleaned up pretty good. So I've got a uh, random feet that I'm probably not going to leave here since I'm going to really post this. <laughs> but again, once you clean it up, don't forget to hit apply. I've done it a couple of times where I didn't hit apply. And then when I went back to do something with the image, the image like kind of disappeared and it was slightly annoying. I had to go, you know, select it again and remove it again. And sometimes it's slow in that feature, but, um, all right. So I'm going to go so upload. We're good. Upload seems pretty simple. Like you upload any file, right? Um, let me see what else was on the agenda. I don't want to forget editing the elements. I went over it really briefly. That was just like the circle that I did was editing the elements. And let me see what else here. Oh, using the right size. I'm going to bring that back. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're on target. Okay. Um, all right, we're done. I'm going to add something to it, the scheduling. So I want to share this with our um, social media. So I'm going, I have options here. I'm going to hit share. And I can copy the link. I rarely do that, copy the link. Because I've tried it before and I feel like when somebody was on an HP versus a Mac, for whatever reason, they couldn't link it, so I just didn't even bother playing with that. So I'm just gonna share on social media, and I'm gonna share on our Instagram. And would you like to post on Instagram immediately? Schedule. And here is the caption. It's gonna be, holy smokes, six more weeks of winter make it lively and i'm going to do my little hashtag add a, add a s to weeks week oh, oh. thank you thank you I, I would have edited it again 
I can't see this morning. All right, and in a cheating way, I do have this thing that you guys are not gonna, um, I have this um, thing over here. I'm gonna try to, I create, my goodness, bananas. Hold on a second. Where is it? Okay, I have my little cheat sheet here of, of hashtags because the hashtags are a big deal on Instagram. So my cheat sheet of hashtags and I'm going to schedule this to be posted at 2.41 p.m. today. And I hit schedule. Is the cheat sheet in Canva or do you find it somewhere else? Oh, the hashtag cheat sheet. What I had done is I created it. So I went to my, um, our ideal avatar and the, where they exist and the posts that have a lot of a lot of um, likes or reposting and stuff. And then I looked at the hashtags they had and if it was relevant to what we did, I just stole, I just started creating a list and stole their hashtags because the people that we wanna attract live there and they go there, those hashtags are what they're using. So I just used the same thing. I just created it on a notes page. So whenever I post, I literally just copy and paste the same hashtags, copy and paste the same hashtags because I'm not very patient about re, um, <laughs> redoing it. Hopefully, does that answer? Yes. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to assume this. Yes. I can hear anything. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, now share this with another social media platform and I'm going to share it with LinkedIn, but we need to be careful when we're sharing it with, with LinkedIn when we do images. So you hit the, um, the buttons, the little hamburger, it's not really hamburger, it's the three buttons when you want to share and you want to do a copy and a magic resize. The reason I'm saying that is I have a, a list I created for you guys on the presentation that the different social medias, uh, uh, they use different pixels for their size. And I actually went ahead and created a list for like the top social medias that you guys can copy and paste has all the sizes listed um, when we get back to the presentation. So you, instead of just sharing, scheduling and sharing, it's gonna be a weird size when the person looks at it. So one of the things you wanna do is do the copy and the magic resize, and then it will fix it. It will fix it. So let's just say for Facebook. So I, I want, where am I gonna put, I'm gonna put this bad boy. We'll just put him on Facebook because who cares. So it, it did a magic resize, it corrected the size, called it copy of Groundhog Day, and then I'll go back and, and I will share on social media. And now I'm going to share on our Facebook page. And when you, things are different, I'm sorry, my, my mind is racing, there's a couple of things I wanna to say to you, so let me start from the beginning. This is an MP4, so it didn't save the things that I had written, because I was sharing an MP4, so it's making me write it again. But when you share just an image, it will allow you to just copy it and then the, the words will just populate so you don't have to write the things again. Or you can just go, if I don't feel like writing this again, and I'm like, okay, what did I say? I wanna stay consistent. So all I need to do is go back to the home page, go to my content planner, and I see that I've created this post so now I'm gonna double click it. I'm like, okay, this is this is what I wrote and I want it to be the same. So I'm just gonna hit control, hopefully control A works in this environment and then control C, copy it. Okay, I've copied the text that I wanted, just X out, go back to my project. Here's my copy. You see that it's a Facebook post on the bottom where the other one shows Instagram, this shows Facebook. I'm just gonna populate it again, hit share, share on social media sharing on my Facebook page and then control V and it's unconsistent. And for this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and just publish now. So and it resized it so it's not gonna be wonky looking. And um, that's super important because in the beginning, if you look at our Instagram page, I've only been doing this for like six months, but if you look in the beginning and like you should look at our other social media, you'll see that there's things that I've reused from Instagram onto Facebook that are all morphed and weird and they're not looking clear. It looks super unprofessional. And I think that when 
I worry about looking unprofessional and those kind of things because I feel like it takes away um, maybe your validity or people think, oh, there's so many scams out there that it would make me think it was a scam. Like I look for things that are wonky to make sure I'm not being scammed. It's just so working um, at a um, domain registrar and knowing and realizing that there's so many things out there to be scanned. We just want to make sure we represent ourselves in the best light and people look for funky errors when they're looking to see if you know you're valid or not valid one of the things that i've noticed the most in this community when people were using canva and i'm not pointing anyone out is that when they were using um creating a template they would go on to say social media and then they would decide they're going to do a uh, an instagram story and then these stories would pop up and they would just you know, go ahead and like, there's nothing wrong with using it. They would just use the story. They would change some of these words, but they would leave this at really great, great site on there. And you didn't like identify your website. So one of the, that's one of the things that, you know, it's just the learning curve. I wanted to share that because I know that we certainly did it. My sister called me like immediately and like freaking like four seconds time. She's like, you didn't change this. And I was like, oh, meltdown it took me longer to pull it down <laughs> to actually fix it because i like literally blanked out in the stress of it so we have and, a lot of questions virginia about where the um where you change it to the different social media sites so can you go back to that again sure. where it has a magic sure. editor yes okay so to change your sizes if you're i'll go to something that we've um i'll do like a picture of something that we've that then i've done Okay, I'm just gonna use this one here. This is like a, doesn't and that look good in this picture? It's just like a picture day, woo! I love her. <laughs> so when you're, we're sorry, did not have to. I don't even know how you're reacting because I don't see the camera. I don't have the camera in front of me. <laughs> Hopefully it's, it's love. Um, on this picture that we were sharing, um, you have the option that you can do the resizing through here if you're ready to share and your work is done. But I personally don't like to do it there. I use the resize button on the left hand side and it gives you all kinds of different options. So you're on the resize and most of the things that are commonly used, this is an Instagram square, but the commonly used things are listed here. So Canva's pretty cool about that. Uh, to change your pixels, you just would type them in there or just find it. Like you know you're doing a YouTube banner and so then you just click the YouTube banner. If you know that you're doing a Facebook post, you would click it. Now, when you do that, it's gonna change like the aspect of all of these images. So you have to play around and go back and fix them. But that's, that's how you would do it. So for this particular uh, thing, I'm gonna change this to a uh, Facebook cover. I'm gonna hit copy and resave because I may need to use this for a post later and if you just resize it your original work goes away so you can hit the back bar as much as you can to get it back but your original stuff goes so just copy of it so whatever your name is on the corner it'll say copy of copy at the lively office or it'll say and it'll just keep doing it as you keep changing it so just change go in copy and resize and then change the name so we'll just copy and resize it and Facebook has a different pixel, so you see how it moved everything. It gave us more of the picture in the background and moved Nanette to the middle. So now I've got to move her, got to make it bigger, and then I, I need to just, just change, just move some things around. You know, and there's some options in here when you're playing around with this. Across the bar, it's kind of like anybody who's worked with Word or PowerPoint or any of those kind of products. So a lot of this is very similar. So for example, if I wanna make sure that these words are right in the middle and where are, are they indented to the left? Are they, are they centered? You just kind of move it like you did with any other document. I'm gonna just say for today, it's gonna go in the middle. And then the position within the picture, I wanna make sure that it's in the middle and in the center. So you just kind of, you just play around with all of it and know that there's nothing that you can do to hurt it. There's nothing you can do to hurt it. So if you super mess up just hit the back button and the best part about canva is it auto saves so as long as you have this cloud with the check mark you are good to go with the cloud with the check mark 
it saved it. Now, if you're in there and it doesn't do that, then you might have a problem. Occasionally we'll have glitchy internet and it won't save. It'll save the last version of it. Um, just be patient because, you know, it is what it is, you know. All right, more questions. I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna go to projects. What about yeah. music? We had somebody asking about music. Do you add music to your posts? Sometimes. Sometimes we do. I'm gonna go back to this, get past this. And I wanted to share this. I thought this is super important for you guys to like screenshot this. Uh, this is the 2023 guide in pixels. What is this? That little X, I'm trying to get that out of the way so you guys can see it. I hope this is helpful. This is like all the sizes that you need specifically for images. Understand the videos are different. Um, this is for your Instagram, your Facebook, your Twitter, LinkedIn, and TikTok. Nanette, are you proud of me for saying LinkedIn? I am because you usually call it Indeed. So I have an obsession. <laughs> I call it Indeed. I mean, it starts with N. What kind of stupid is that? Should be an L. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, LinkedIn. So these are the sizes very specifically for the images. The source that I took this from was Status Brew. They had an article and I just kind of gathered all of the information and kind of wrote it out there for you. The sizes change if there are videos, just depending if you're doing like a YouTube story, it's more of the same kind of like the TikTok Im that image it versus YouTube. If you're doing YouTube, it's more landscape. Um, if I'm bored today, I can make another cheat sheet if this is helpful. You guys, I mean, <laughs> you guys Darla want that. Asked, yeah. Darla asked about TikTok, and we can oh. share directly to TikTok, correct? Say that again? You can share directly to TikTok. Yes. On Canva, yes. Yes. Absolutely, yes, you can. Um, there's a whole option on, on there. I haven't done that yet because TikTok is um, new to my world as of February 1st, thanks to Nanette bullying me into doing it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> she was like, strategic, we're doing this. I'm like, yes. I mean, I say yes to everything though. I'm like, yes, yeah, wanna do it? Sure, yeah. Wanna do something crazy? Wanna cut off her hair on camera? Sure. <laughs> so that's, what, that's what I do. But um, hopefully this helps. I'm gonna move on to the next screen, which is if you guys wanna keep in touch with us, this is different options. Uh, I created all of this presentation using Canva, didn't do a PowerPoint, just did it with Canva. That's our different contact information. And because I wanted to be cool, I did this. Yeah. <laughs> so on the top left is our Lively Office website. And if you want me to email you, the PowerPoint or the Canva presentation, you're gonna have to go to livelyoffice.com and join our mailing list. And I will email this to you. <laughs> and if you wanna follow us on Instagram, the QR code's on the bottom left. If you want to follow my personal shenanigans, the top right corner is my TikTok and the bottom right corner is my personal uh, Instagram. I didn't have permission. I couldn't get a hold of Nanette to share hers, so I didn't. But if she wants to, I'll update it. And for those of you who sign up at the Lively Office, I'll make a new slide with that in there. <laughs> so, so that's that. Um, more questions. More questions? Okay. I'm going to move you guys in front of me because I'm sad and I'm like tired of not seeing your beautiful faces. There we go. <laughs> Doug! <laughs> Yeah, I want to go back to Mandy's question about inserting music. Uh, okay. How can we do that? What's the details to that? Okay, super easy. If you're, I'm going to move the screen. I'm just, I'm a shower person. I'm going to show it to you. Is that fine? Yes. Okay, so when you're creating a project and you want to insert, we're going to say that you're creating a video. So we're going to create um, a video and I'm just going to, pretend the video is going to be in this this size like the YouTube size they've got videos different videos set here and they have audio some basic audio kind of already there so what you'll do you either have your video already uploaded I can upload I can share one of our crazy ones so, oh here we go video yes yeah, so, so I can upload something that I have like just just music, not even a video necessarily, but like a song. Well, I don't know how that works. So let's like, 
there's just the song on a blank page, you know, and yeah. that like that's like the different options that they um, that they provide here. I have not been so brave as to upload music into Canva, but what I have done is taken the script that has audio and stuff and uploaded it that way. Oh, so like, Because wow, it's okay. part of the video, like the sound is in the video, but then the editing is different when you do it that way because it's not their sound. You have to kind of like edit it in whatever program you use. And we use Descript for that. This it's more giving. Descript is more giving for the the for the videos. And it just depends on what you're doing. If you're just doing like a quick, hey, I'm cuckoo crazy and hey, come follow me, blah, blah, blah. Canva's your, Canva's your thing. But if you're trying to do some like content type thing, I wouldn't do that. I would record it on a different, cause it's not, it's not giving in that. They're not there yet, I don't think. But what I did do on some of our videos is that I created templates so that where Nanette and I recorded our video through Zoom. We uploaded it to Descript, and then there was portions in the air where Nanette and I were acting crazy. Like, what was happening to our face? Like, we would zone out in the camera, and we'd be like, and it's ugly, so nobody wants to see that. So what I did is go on Canva and create an image that matched what we were talking about, and then downloaded it and inserted it in Descript, so you would still be talking and what we were saying, but the um they wouldn't see us doing this anymore <laughs> so i don't think to me canva's not the best for the videos right now and that could just be user error i've only done this for six months it's just i'm a obsessive learner kind of person and this made me feel like a, a way to get some you know be creative for once you know working in my, my previous job creativity was a flat no-no so <laughs> this is like an avenue to like explore who I was before I entered the workforce. <laughs> and with the copyright issues, if we were to use any music or anything with our with our posts, we would just go through whatever app we were on, like on Instagram sound or uh, TikTok sound or whatever. That's how we were adding sound from that perspective. And that way we didn't have to worry about any copyright issues. Right. And then for video, we were using Descript. She did make a couple videos in here, though. Yeah, I did. I mean, they're 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 ridiculous. <laughs> Nana, what did you say you did is to avoid the copyright issues? I heard it was like eight bars that you can have, but what, what did you say? Well, we just used whatever was available in Instagram because that way, whatever's available in their libraries for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, you don't have to worry about the copyright issues. That's already been gone through. So we're not uh, we're not taking somebody else's audio like us like our favorite song like before i came on here i was having like a bad bunny moment <laughs> and i was like hyping myself you know and i can't just use bad bunny and and even if it is just the first bars because that's actually like not true what i've, I've heard that people say that you can only use the first time frame and it's not an issue and that's actually not true i asked my brother who's in the uh, uh, movie industry that question he's like no if they find you they can force you to take that down so I mean what's the chances of them finding you uh, probably slim but you know it's not that's not how it goes but if, if if you found the audio in the social media platform itself then it's like free game so we just don't play with it all right because we did we did post some videos oh, a year or two ago and we put some music and it was just blanked out like they it somehow they, off. they just shut off the sound. So mm -hmm. they some found us because it was a popular whatever at the time. And they just I uh, I think it was Facebook. They, no, was it Facebook or Instagram? Facebook. It was Facebook. And they, yeah, and they just blocked it out. Where it was just yeah, where you can't even hear it. I don't know how they did what they did it. And so, because it's not a problem in our country, but it might be a copyright infringement in another country. And because they're global platforms, they'll like just shut you down. So what about Christian music? Um, I mean, is there Christian music to use in Instagram, YouTube, all of those other sources? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah, there's a lot, especially like to the, the mainstream, like Toby Mac, your songs, um, and those kind, you'll find those in there. I wanna say one thing though for Instagram that I noticed, 
is that it's the music choices, if you set up your Instagram account as a business account, are way less like off-brand music. But if you set it up as like a personal, it gives you all of the music choices. I'm not sure why that is, but that was my workaround was one personal, one business, share with each other and the world's fine. That's the workaround I did. See, I'm the problem solver. Like if you have a product, Nanette and I, we, I mean, if you guys need to know if your thing's working, call us because we'll break it. We'll try to, we'll try to find a way around it and break it. It's like what we do. <laughs> like certain conferences, they just need to be better on the things because maybe I didn't pay to go to podcast fest. <laughs> Not my fault that you guys have a rule that I know how to exploit. <laughs> so uh, anyway, you know, not stealing, but just creative. <laughs> and that was my thing. Another creative thing I just did because I like the virtual makeup because I'm not a makeup person. I wear eyeliner and lipstick only. And I call it filters. I call them virtual makeup. So I don't have a filter on my phone to record raw. So what I had done just recently is created a private account that I don't share on Instagram. I use the filter, I record it, and then I actually on my iPhone do a screen share. So I record it with the filter, then I hit play, do a screen share on my iPhone, and then I edit the video. So now I look beautiful and I upload it later on to TikTok. So, hey. You know, I mean, that's a lot. There's a lot of drama, which is just not like ugly in the camera, but <laughs> you know, I get like super red face and I don't want to wear makeup. And I look crazy when I'm red faced like that. People think I'm angry or something or think I'm an alcoholic and it's like blood pressure issues. <laughs> so there's a workaround for everything. You know, if you need a, if you need a workaround, just like, you know, hit Nanette and I up. <laughs> Well, somebody's asking about the iPad. Yeah, I have an iPad and you can do Canva on an iPad very easily. It does almost everything you can do on a desktop. I, I haven't run across anything you can't do on an iPad. Can I ask y'all a quick question about the music? I was trying to write it out. I don't even know how to write the question. But like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, did y'all say that those are all, they all share the same music and any music on those platforms are okay to use? You're okay to use them, but I don't think they share the same music. Okay. So I'm if saying, I took a, so if I made a video and put it in Canva to share to TikTok, and then I wanted to share it on Facebook, I could run into some issues. No, what we're saying is when you upload it, we wouldn't. If you were having with music, we wouldn't do it from the auto share here. What you would do is just download that whatever you make in Canva, and then do it backwards. You go to TikTok first go to TikTok, pull your file up, and then add the music on their platform. Right. You wouldn't, oh, okay. able, you wouldn't be able to schedule it out if you wanted, if you're going to use their music. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I just like looked over at the chat and got all kinds of excited at like the number that was there. It was like over a hundred little chat items. I went, I, I got to Delaine, you can't close it out too early because I want to read them. Anyway, any more questions? I hope this was helpful, you guys. This was so fun for me. I do feel like I was going too fast, so I'm sorry if I was. I was just trying to balance that there are some people on here who really know how to do it and some people who don't, and it's like hard to find a balance. But they can watch the recording, you know, so they can see it again. Okay. Anything else you want to go over? Like, go ahead, you got me. I just had a quick question if there's 30 seconds. Um, super helpful today. Thank you for your time. I just wanted to know on um, resizing because um, my website's on Kajabi. I'm finding that I'm spending hours resizing on a blank template to get it to fit on the hero page or the custom page. Are there any quick resizing tips? Because, you know, images will get clipped or whatever. I don't know if you have any tips on that. Yeah, definitely. Upload your image. Up your, upload your image. Let me see if I can share it again. Like, now, if Shay, are you talking about when you're moving it from Canva to Kajabi? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, I'll put the image um, on, so I get it all set. I, I uh, download my Canva uh, template and then 
um, upload it to Kajabi, and then it's like, oh, no, you got to go back and resize, not resize the size for Kajabi, but fix the image so that like the top of the schoolhouse isn't missing or whatever's on there. I have to keep going back and like making the things that I put from elements or whatever, make them smaller, make them bigger. I just didn't know if there's any quick tips. Do we have, um, the, does Kajabi have the, um, the listing of their, like their, their sizes? Yes. Uh, available. So I, what I would do is I would get that. And whenever you're say like, you've got your, I'm just going to start. You guys can still see the screen. Am I still sharing? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to just pretend I'm like creating like just, uh, just a social media, um, just a, you know, just something, just a, okay. a document. So. If I had uploaded like a picture of whatever our um, our professional looking guy, and we wanted to use it in Kajabi mm -hmm. to resize it, what I you just would do your image or upload your image if you already have it, start a new project, and then just hit the resize button. You have the option of to use it in pixels, inches, millimeters, or centimeters, and then just type in manually the size that they're requesting. So yeah, I would have done that. It's it's still not worked. It so it gets on there into Kajabi, but sometimes I still have to go back to Canva because part of like the cactus here, like maybe the tip of his head isn't isn't there. And so I'll have to make the graphic smaller. Is that just well that would that should, I mean to make the graphic smaller, you uh, yeah, you would have to just put, you would have to figure out what sizes Kajabi says is useful find out the size like because you know it's for it depends on which one you're doing like if you're doing like that big banner across the top it's gonna it's gonna be different than when you're doing say just like a, an image above your call to action so we kind of experienced that too so what we ended up doing was just uploading in kajabi multiple sizes that we and we would literally just do this like it would be like okay this is you know this is kajabi one and then we would just know that this was whatever the 1080 by 1080 and that he was on he was full you know like okay we just decided that he's full and if it didn't work then we because we really had that problem when we were doing the little favicon on the corner you know because you want him when people on your website to see your favicon and that was a real struggle so we just had to find out what those sizes were and we just sat here and made them all that's why you see so many we just made them all on the screen and then just started uploading them into Kajabi so that the best part about Kajabi is it holds onto your picture so when you're hitting select you just have an option to re-select the picture that you wanted. Hopefully that's answering your question. But that yeah, some, it sounds like I'm doing it right. It's just some take longer than others. <laughs> well, yeah, it's better. some images because of I think the other uh, ratio, like you just can't do it just because it's like the ratio of the picture. You right. know, not all of them, like some of them are one to one, some are nine to sixteen, so it just depends. All right, okay. answer Amy's question, what in the Sam Hill is a favicon? What? Okay, so like right here on, on this little C for Canva is a favicon. So um, here, if we go to the lively office, see our little guy up there? His, that's that little image, so that that's, that's the image that's associated as our logo, associated with our logo. So that's a favicon. That's why we named him Bobby, because it was such a pain in the rear to get it to be the right size. Like I thought Nanette was going to lose her mind because that one was on Nanette. It was so fun. <laughs> Kajabi is not the easiest when it comes to sizing, even your text and everything. It's just that it's not, it's getting better all the time, um, right. but it's not, it's not perfect yet. So that, that was a struggle for us. That was a big struggle. It, it really was. Um, and that's why we ended up naming him Bobby, just because it was such a, a, a turmoil when we were starting our website, when we were creating, I mean, we were like angry. We were like seriously angry. I mean, we're not angry people, but could you imagine that? You know, we're like, good job, hey. ah. And good job, he kept get putting the background back in. They went, even though it didn't have a background, and it, so it'd be clear with whatever size, the, whatever color the tab was, it would be a black box behind it. And they would be like, oh, we're editing our system. And I'd have to go back and figure it out again. Yeah, it was it was a challenge. And Kajabi is always updating. So there are those challenges with that. Oh, my goodness. You just said something that was awesome. And I already stopped sharing my screen. In Canva, 
you have the option to download pictures with a clear background. So what um, Nanette's talking about is like when you have like say your image and then it looks, you know, it's white and then your logo, you can um, go upload your image with the white logo, remove the background, and then when you save it, save it transparent so that you actually just have like the cutout image. I thought that was a really cool feature for Canva because typically when we were starting this, my son makes the stuff on Adobe Illustrator because he's like a certified Adobe person. And I was on top of him about making these transparent things. Now uh, Canva does it, so I think that's awesome. So if you guys have an image that you just want the cutout of the image, you can just download with transparency. It's the same option where you hit the share button and you're downloading. Just take a minute, even though you might be frustrated building your site, and just read and it's there. The information's there for you. Okay, this was amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I had so much fun. Oh my gosh. You didn't get to see this, Nanette, but people are noticing the banter between you two and how much you are connected. And it, it is so fun to watch. We've been telling you this for a year. It is so fun to watch both of you. You're like peanut butter and jelly. You just go together. <laughs> you just go together. So, That's thank, so cool. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you.